What's up guys? My name is Dwayne Sherrill and this is My Wife as a Board Gamer, a show about my love for my wife, my love for board games, and what I'm doing to bring the two together. Today I want to show you guys Wingspan. This is a game that I really enjoy playing with my wife. We always have a fun time when it gets to the table. Uh, it's just a relaxing and beautiful game and I don't even want to waste any more time. I just want to go ahead and go to the table and show you how it plays. Okay, so before I start, I have to point out one thing. These bird nests did not come with the game. I had to go get these on my own, but the eggs in, there, in this game are such great quality that I had to like take it up a notch and find a perfect, uh, a, a, an appropriate container for the eggs. But as you can see, the game itself is just beautiful, has great components. So... Wingspan is an engine building game where the players are bird enthusiasts who are trying to attract birds to their personal aviary represented by this player board. So each player is going to get one of these player boards. They're also going to get eight cubes of their color. They're also going to get one of each of the um, food that you need to attract the birds and five random bird cards from the top of the deck. They're also going to get two secret objective goals. They're going to look at them and they're going to pick one and discard the other one. And then the first player is going to get this first player token. So here's a closer look at the food tokens and the bird cards. So the food tokens, you have fruit, you have fish, you have rodent, you have seed, and you have invertebrate. And these are the types of food that you will use to attract the birds to your aviary. Now the bird cards, well, let's take a look at the anatomy of a bird card. I'm going to hold this one closer. So this one, the name of the bird is at the top. So this is the Greater Roadrunner. And I, I love the Roadrunner cartoon growing up. I used to watch it all the time. Um, over here, you have the type of habitat that the bird can survive in. So this is grassland. And over here, you have forest. This bird can survive in grassland and forest. This one can survive in water, wetland rather, and grassland. Now, right below the habitat symbol is the food that you need to uh, have in your possession to attract this bird into your aviary. So this bird would need an invertebrate and a rodent. And this symbol means uh, anything. So it could be another rodent and it could be a fruit. Now you see the plus sign. The plus sign means you need all these food tokens to attract this bird into your aviary. If there was a slash, that would mean either or. So you could either have need an invertebrate or a rodent. Okay. Anytime you see this feather with a number next to it, that represents victory points. So this bird, once it's played into your aviary, you will have seven victory points at the end of the game. Now, below that, you have your nest type. So this bird has a platform nest. Now, this bird here has a bowl. This bird here has ground. And this bird here has a cavity like in the side of a tree. And anytime you see this star symbol, that's a wild. So it could represent any nest type. Now, there are some birds in this game that don't have a nest type. And because it says at the flavor test at the bottom that these birds lay their eggs at other birds' nests, which I think is kind of hardcore. So below the nest is the egg symbol. So this bird can hold two eggs. And I will go into detail about the eggs shortly. Now, over to here, you have this bird's wingspan. So the wingspan of this bird is 56 centimeters. Now, some of the birds have a brown ribbon at the bottom. And it is an ability that will activate when you take an action. So I will go into that shortly. But 
some birds have a white banner. And when you play this bird in your aviary, anything in the white banner would go off right then and there. It's a one-time uh, ability. So this bird will, when played, draw two bonus cards and keep one. Any bird with the pink banner, these are uh, abilities that will activate on someone else's turn once per round. So if you're playing a three-player game, you can't activate the pink ability on one person, then on the next person. You have to wait to the whole round. You only got one time to do it. Okay? Now, the best thing I like about these cards is at the bottom, there is a nice little fact about this bird. So this bird, it's, this fact says, road runners rarely fly, but will jump up to snatch prey out of the air. Now, this game has 170 bird cards, and each card is a unique species of bird. So that I think that's the best thing about these cards is this little information fact at the bottom. Like, my wife's a teacher, so she loves learning about stuff. So that's the one thing I like about this. So, as I said, at the beginning of the game, each player is going to get five food tokens and five random bird cards off the top of the deck. Now, your this is going to create your starting hand. The thing is, you choose which bird for, to keep, and for each bird you keep, you have to discard one of these food tokens. It, tokens. it doesn't matter what the food token is. So if I was to keep three birds in my hand, I will have to discard three of these tokens. And then, after every player has done that, we will start the game. Now, these are the hidden gold cards. Each player will have two, and they will just look at them secretly and decide to keep one and discard the other one. So this one is birds that eat rodents. And for every bird that eat rodents, you will get two victory points per bird. Now, it doesn't have to be eat just rodent. It could be rotors included in the cost of the bird. Now, it also shows at the bottom that 15% of the 170 cards match this goal. Now, on this side, you have birds with the bow symbol, okay, with the bow nest. And if you get four or five of those birds in your aviary, you will get four victory points. If you get six or more, you will get seven victory points at the end of the game. And this, and there's 31% of this the, the cards that match this go in the deck. So they're all different ones. You know, there's one that says birds with wingspans of 30 centimeters or less. There's birds with colors in their names. That's a fun one. And then there's like birds with geography terms in their names. Yeah, my wife likes that one. So let's say I ch choose to, to keep this one and discard this one. Also, as part of setup, we would place this goal board where all players can see it. And we would place four random in-round bonus goals onto this board. So for the first round, Players want to try to get as many birds into their forest habitat as they can. So now that I got my starting hand of cards, I got my food tokens, and I got my objective that I'm keeping secret from the other players, the game can begin. So wingspan lasts four rounds, and starting with the starting player and going clockwise, each player can do one of four actions. The first action I can take is to play a bird. So to play a bird, I would go to the leftmost space of any bird already played. So of course, at the beginning of the game, I don't have any birds played. So I will place my cube here. And then I will play a bird. So I'm going to play a bird into the forest. And to play this bird, I have to discard a vertebrae and a seed, returning it to the supply, and I can place this bird into my aviary. 
And then this cube will slide over here. Now, if I wanted to play another bird, if I wanted, I have to go to the leftmost space of an already played bird in that particular habitat. So if I was going into the grassland or the wetland, I would go here. But if I go into the forest again, I will go here. Now, you see this egg symbol here? So to play this bird into the forest, not only would I have to pay two vertebrae, return invertebrate, return it to the supply, but I also have to pay one egg. Okay? Now, once I, I don't have any eggs, so I can't play that bird now. So we're not going to do this. But if I did, I would play the bird and this will slide down here. The other action I can do is to gather food. Now, to gather food, I would take my cube and go to the leftmost space of any played bird. So I put my cube here and I will be able to gather one food from the bird feeder. So this is the food that's available to me right now. I have two fish, I have a seed, I have a fruit, and then I have one dice that's showing I could take either an invertebrate or a seed. So I can take one food from the bird feeder. So let's say I take this seed. I will take this dice, remove it from the tray, setting it aside, and then I will take one seed from the supply and put it into my play area. Now, if ever there was only one type of dice or food in the uh, bird feeder, so let's say there's two fish and I needed to take another food, I could take either the fish if that's what I need or I could take all the die, re-roll it, and then take a fruit. Take that out and take a fruit and put it in my play area. Now, after taking that food, my cube will slide down and it will stop on any bird that has a brown ribbon written under. And that this is when this ability will activate. So if I had a bunch of birds with the brown ribbon and I played place my cube here taking food, I will go down to this bird, activate the brown ribbon, go down here, go down here. And that's where the engine building aspect would uh, take place. So as you can see here, I could take one food and then I could discard a card from my hand to take another food from the bird feeder. If I had a bird here, so let's say this bird was here. I will place my cube here and take two food and so on and so on. So as you can see, the action that I'm taking will become more and more powerful. So another action I can do is I can lay eggs. So I will take my cube, go to the leftmost space, and then I will be able to do this action and I can lay two eggs. So I could take any egg, doesn't matter, or the color. You know, what I, I prefer to use green for forests, brown for grasslands, blue for wetlands. And I would take these two eggs and place them on a bird that I have in my aviary. So as you can see, this bird can hold two eggs. Okay, so I'll place those two eggs there. So now I can place a bird here if I wanted to, because now I have eggs to pay the extra cost to play that bird. Now, of course, the more birds that I play here, like let's say this was here, this gets more powerful. So now if I take the lay egg action, I can take two eggs and then I could pay a resource, discard one of the food tokens in order to get a third egg. I can go over here and get three eggs if I had a bird here. So, like I said, the action becomes more and more powerful as we go through the game. So, I've shown you play a, the action play a bird. 
I've shown you you can uh, collect food from the bird feeder. You can lay eggs. And the last action you could take is to draw bird cards from the deck. So you would take one of your cubes, place it here. And then I would take a bird card. I could take any of the three face up bird cards or I can draw blindly off the top of the deck. So let's say I take this one. This bird can live in the wetlands and I can pay either an invertebrate or a fish to play this bird into my aviary. And this bird would give me four victory points at the end of the game. And also it has a wow nest token. So if you remember my secret objective is to have birds with bows in my aviary. So this would count. Now, when I take this card, this does not get replenished right away. It gets replenished at the end of my turn. So let's say on a later turn, I play this bird into my wetlands, uh, discarding the appropriate food tokens. So now the next time I would take a draw card action, I'll place my cube to the leftmost space, and then I could draw a card, and then I could spin the egg to draw a second card. And then I will move this cube here, and this bird will activate. So this bird says when activated, draw one card, if you do, discard one card at the end of your turn. I don't have to do that, but of course it will help me cycle through the deck more efficiently. And so then I would take this cube and move it here. So once all the players have spent their eight cubes, because remember you start with eight cubes at the beginning of the game, the round is over. So the cleanup, we would take all the cubes that we use, slide them off of our player board. And then each player would take one of their cubes and place it on the number of birds and forests that they got. So let's say I got two, my wife got three, let's say another player got four. Okay, the most you can get is five points. Okay, now if you remember, we were using our cues to track our turns in the first round. So in the first round, you get eight turns. But now that we place our cube here, we're going into the second round. We will only have seven turns. And our new end round goal will be the number of eggs in the platform nest. So this is my aviary at the end of the game. Now, the game actually comes with this nice score sheet, which will help you add up all your points and figure out your final score. Now, you will take all the victory points on your birds and add them up. You will look at your bonus cards and did you achieve that bonus? You will check your end of round goals and add all those up. You will have four cubes on that board. You will count up the eggs, and each egg that's on your bird is worth a victory point. So right now, I'm looking at nine points on eggs. You will count up the food that's cached on your card. So like this bird here, I have three seeds cached on it, so that's three points. And then I would look at tucked cards. So tucked cards will be cards that are behind the bird. So some of these birds... Have you tucked cards behind them to represent flock? Some of these birds are predators, and they have you tuck cards underneath it as prey. And you will get a victory point for each of those cards. And then you will add up your points, and that will be your final score. So that's Wingspan. Wingspan is published by Stonemeyer Games. It's for ages 10 and up. It lasts 40 to 70 minutes. It's for one to five players, so it does have a solo mode. You already know how we feel about the game, but to illustrate how accessible this game is, a few months ago, one of my wife's Sunday school students came over, and she loves birds, so I decided to teach her the game. We ended up playing, and she had a really good time. She actually came in second place. I see you talking about Wingspan. Yes, dear. I'm telling about Wingspan. We about to play, right? I guess so. All right, so if you enjoy the content of this video, please hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe. Like me on Facebook and Instagram. And like I said, I'm Dwayne.
I'm Alicia. And we will see you next time.